This change in champion would have left a big blot on Schumacher's legacy. In 1999, Ferrari were once again close to getting the driver's title, but not because of Michael Schumacher. No, it was down to his long-term teammate, Eddie Irvine. If you don't know who that is, that's the guy that Ed and Senna tried to punch in the face after he tried to unlap himself at Suzuka. Is this like 2016 with Rosberg and Hamilton? No, 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 no. It's not as simple as that. Michael Schumacher had a catastrophic incident at Silverstone, which left him completely unable to race for a few races before he could come back in. But to be fair, Eddie Irvine was fast. In fact, he won the first race of 1999, his first win. In the end, Eddie Irvine lost the title by only two points. And if you think that Michael Schumacher wasn't helpful in getting Eddie Irvine the title, he surprisingly was. Eddie Irvine was quoted at one of the races that not only is Michael Schumacher the best number one, he's also the best number two, making sure that Eddie Irvine got to the title and also helping Ferrari get to their first constructors title in over 15 years. And this is the only time in the first phase of Michael Schumacher's career he helped out a teammate like this. The rest of the time, Oh, he was ruthless. There were only two times where Eddie Irvine failed to score. That time at the Nürburgring, he was close. He was seventh in a really catastrophic race. You should look that up. Nürburg 1999. Very, very crazy. But the deciding race was San Marino. Eddie Irvine was third place, but unfortunately, his car let him down and he had to retire from a good podium position. And what was even more galling? was that Mika Hakkinen retired from that race. He had an unforced error coming out of the last corner, crashing into the wall, and that was that completely on his own. And had that been the case, that Eddie Irvine got that podium, Hakkinen wouldn't have scored and Eddie Irvine would have won the 1999 title by two points. But what would have happened after that? Would Eddie Irvine have gone down in history as the first Irish Formula One world champion? Well, not quite, since he actually hails from Northern Ireland, County Down to be more specific, and he raced under the Union Jack. But I imagine that it would have probably been used in marketing purposes later on in life. I've not just got one outcome for you, but I've got four of them. These ways, I think, would be viable in how Eddie Irvine would have pursued his career from 1999, having won the world title. So with that, let's set the scene. The first scenario, Eddie Irvine wins the 1999 world title and he chooses to remain with the Scuderia for the year 2000. But if you think that it would be a peaceful affair that Michael Schumacher would have aided him to another world title bid, think again. From here, there would be a massive power play because these two drivers at the time didn't see eye to eye. Eddie Irvine constantly bashed the dynamic that Michael Schumacher had at Ferrari, always determined to be the one that topples Michael Schumacher from his dominant stance. And by winning the 1999 world title, he would have done that. But you might be thinking that, well, it technically wasn't a straight up fight. Michael Schumacher wasn't even present for a few races, Mika Salo substituting. Well, in terms of the history books in Eddie Irvine's mind, it wouldn't even matter. He won the world title, that's the end of that. He was the one to buck the trend that had made itself apparent during the Benetton days. He uses the emotional card of the Deposi since Michael failed to do what he promised to do with the team, to win the championship with Ferrari, and Eddie Irvine did. The media would be gobbling this up. They would view Michael Schumacher's bid to get the world title for Ferrari as a failure because he was beaten to it. Much like how Fernando Alonso failed to get the title for Ferrari and Sebastian Vettel and Charles Leclerc currently. The headlines would be, what next for Michael Schumacher? Because his original remit had failed. The team themselves are unsure what to do. Who do they back? Do they back the guy that helped bring Ferrari back to a state where they could actually be competitive? Or do they back the guy that got them their first world title since Jody Schechter in 1979? It's a bit of a tough decision. What more could Eddie Irvine do? Or was this his peak? Nobody was sure. But Michael Schumacher knows he's not done with this yet. As you know, he is one for mind games and he would be bringing to the year 2000 all of his mind games. He would be giving everything that he had to destabilize Eddie Irvine. Every single dirty trick, every single scheme, he would use everything he could and every connection he had at the team to make sure things went his way. He wouldn't be playing nice. He would do everything he could to destabilize Eddie Irvine and it would work. The media would be absolutely in awe of this battle, a civil war amongst the Scuderia. And as we know, Ferrari isn't a stranger when it comes to chaos amongst their inner ranks. In response to this, Eddie Irvine would be playing dirty as well. But in the end, it's quite clear to the senior staff at Ferrari, including Jean Todt, that all of this infighting was not getting them anywhere. 
They ultimately would support Michael, but the battles on track would continue. Team orders would be ignored. Battles for position would be furiously intense and probably come to blows with both drivers actually taking each other out and this playing into the hands of McLaren and Mika Hakkinen. Having lost the 99 title in this hypothetical scenario by only two points, Hakkinen would be quietly doing his own thing, using DC to his advantage and relative harmony, and you know what McLaren were like at the time, and he would be the one to get the 2000 world title instead of Michael Schumacher. And Michael would be furious. He had been thwarted yet again with a car that was competitive. In a fit of pique, having lost this title bid, Eddie Irvine would have had enough with the Scuderia. He would have played into Michael Schumacher's hands and he would have left the team for somewhere else. He probably would go to Jordan after Eddie Jordan would convince him hypothetically to leave the team and of course make bank on Irvine's championship credentials and sponsors that would come with him. In 2003, Eddie Jordan did offer Eddie Irvine a place at the Jordan team after things didn't work out at Jaguar. However, it wasn't really workable because Eddie Irvine did not come with any big name sponsors, which is something that Jordan at the time desperately needed. So it didn't work out. And yes, in the wake of Honda actually pulling out the Mugen Honda engines, yeah, Jordan were really left to rot. But going into 2001, maybe Jordan might have survived a little longer because they would have had a champion on their books, there would have been some sponsors, there might have been some more convincing of Honda to keep the Mugen Honda power units. It might have been better for them. This could prop the team up long enough before Eddie Irvine does retire, probably at the end of 2004. The second scenario is that Eddie Irvine wins the 1999 world title, but retires immediately afterward. Why would he do this? During the 90s, Eddie Irvine was actually getting into the property market and making a lot of money in the process. So after winning the 99 title, he would choose to put all of his efforts at the top of his game into that industry and probably make even more money. He was surprisingly successful in this adventure and he has places all over the world. He would be publicizing all the time that he was the one to defeat Michael Schumacher and beat him at his own game. He would have been undefeated, kind of like what Rosberg did in 2016, having realized that he didn't want to go up against Hamilton for a second year because it would have been absolutely awful. Even though the reality was that Michael Schumacher was injured for a while, but that wouldn't matter in the history books. Eddie Irvine was 99 champion, and that's what the headlines care about. And besides, I think that he probably wouldn't have actually won the title in a straight up battle for the championship. Michael would have destroyed him. In response to this, Michael Schumacher would have been fired up. He would have still been angry that he wasn't the one to bring the world championship to Ferrari. So in 2000, he would be even more dominant. He would be even more determined to not just get the title for Ferrari for a second year in a row, but he would also do it in a more dominant and ruthless fashion. That battle between Hakkinen and Schumacher for the 2000 title would have been even more intense. It would have been great meeting. Media, that would have gone down in history as probably one of the most barbaric battles for the title in recent years. And yes, he probably would go on to win multiple titles all the way until 2004, when 2005 Ferrari got it horribly wrong. Third scenario is that Eddie Irvine wins the 99 title and goes to a different team straight after winning it because he realizes, like I said in the previous scenario, doing another season, a full season with Michael Schumacher as your teammate, would be way too much bother. He wouldn't want to be doing any of that. He would be wanting to milk that title and get really juicy lucrative contract deals at another team. But which one? He could go back to Jordan since that's the place where he started his Formula One journey and Eddie Jordan would be open to this because, let's be real here, he would come with a lot of money. It would be in benefit to the Jordan team having capitalized on their success in the 99 season where they were third in the constructors. But as we know in 2000, that would have ultimately led to Eddie Irvine falling way down the table because that Jordan car of 2000 wasn't as good as the 99 car. So I think it would have been a very tumultuous time of it. But to be fair, it wasn't as bad as what Jaguar did that year. McLaren could be a decent option since they were pretty competitive in that season. But I feel that Mika Hakkinen would have a say in the matter. He probably wouldn't want to change in teammate because David Coulthard would be a very good backup. They got on very well. And at that time, they were the longest driver pairing. Really, really long. And of course, we've seen that change now in recent times. But they seemed really, really solid. They worked well together. So why would Mika want to change that? And I feel like that would be enough to convince McLaren to maybe not go with Eddie Irvine since quite clearly he was a troublemaker and McLaren didn't want that sort of thing. They just wanted drivers who were really good, wouldn't kick up a fuss, 
and get them titles, which is what Mika Hakkinen did. Benetton could be a consideration since Flavio Briatore did rate Eddie Irvine a lot at the time, as well as relate to him in his playboy-like nature. And you feel like that maybe this might be a bit of a step down, but in the year 2000, that Benetton car was the fourth fastest. It did get fourth in the constructors and was fairly decent at times. He would be replacing Alexander Wurz because Giancarlo Fisichella got the majority of the points in 2000 for the Benetton team. So it'd be Fisichella and Irvine together and they would do enough to get a little bit closer to Williams, maybe jostling for third place, but it wouldn't lead to any long lasting glory. And the following year in 2001, that team fell down hard. They were seventh and it didn't lead to a good time in Jensen Button's career. That was his reality check year for Jensen. Williams, that would be a very interesting solution, but it would lead to Jensen Button's opportunity in getting to Formula One out in the cold. We probably wouldn't have seen Jensen getting into Formula One, but you feel like at that time, Williams were on the up. They were just about to start their relationship with BMW and Eddie Irvine as the current world champion would be a lucrative addition probably at the expense of Jensen Button, so it would be an Irvine-Ralph Schumacher deal. But at the same time, you would feel like a Schumacher-Irvine relationship after what happened last year? Is that going to be a little bit reckless? Maybe. But what will be clear is that Ralph Schumacher, in comparison to Michael, would be far less aggressive and probably easier to understand. Irvine had four years with a Schumacher, and he could use his championship credentials to try and get favour because Frank Williams would want a champion on his books. And that relationship would actually lead to some good success. I can imagine a few more podiums with Irvine at Williams, but the gap between McLaren and Williams for that title and the constructors was very vast, about over a hundred points at a time where you only get points for the top six. Yeah, I don't think it would actually change the fortunes of Williams all that much. They would be third still, but they would be further away from the rest, a little bit closer to McLaren and a few more opportunities for podiums. But the question is though, would you actually have Montoya or Schumacher for 2001 with Eddie? Oh, <laughs> if uh, Ralph Schumacher did go and you had Montoya with Irvine, wow, that would, uh, that would be a powder keg. And I feel like uh, it wouldn't be a fun time to work for Williams that season. Montoya and Irvine, oh my goodness. The fourth scenario, well, it's a boring one. Eddie Irvine just uses his championship credentials to go to Jaguar anyway, but for a much bigger paycheck, and uh, the rest happens as normal. A bit of a bummer to end on, but Eddie gets money, and that's what he was trying to make. Lots of money, not just with Formula One cars, but also with property. So as you can tell, a lot of stuff could happen, but Eddie Irvine, whatever happened, would be okay coming out of it. He's one of the richest ex-F1 drivers around, but it was pretty fun to think about what would have happened because it would have destabilized Michael Schumacher a lot and he would have been on fire. It just kind of makes me think about the time when I was suggesting what could have happened when Lewis Hamilton decided not to go to Mercedes for 2013. And you might have had Schumacher going for another title, an eighth versus Rosberg. Watch that next.